Welcome. It's my pleasure to introduce to you triple scalar products. We'll be using this notation for vectors. I assume that you are familiar with scalar products and vector products of two vectors. We will be using this knowledge in the video. Now let's proceed to triple scalar product A dot B cross C. First of all, do you think that we should compute A dot B first, or should we perform B cross C first? For the first expression, A dot B gives a scalar. However, we cannot perform cross products of a scalar with a vector, so it's not valid. For the second expression, B cross C gives a vector. Then we can perform dot products of vector A with this new vector, so it's valid. Therefore, even without writing a bracket, A dot B cross C is to perform a dot products of vector A with a vector formed from B cross C using this formula. The result is a scalar, so it's called triple scalar product. To proceed, we will expand this determinant, and then to perform the dot products of vector A with this new vector. After rearranging the terms, we get this result. In fact, if we observe it more closely, we realize that it's the same as to compute this determinant with vectors A, B, and C in the first, second, and third row respectively. It's much simpler. Therefore, A dot B cross C can be obtained by this formula. Let's refer to this example. We are given the vectors A, B, and C, and we would like to evaluate these three triple scalar products. Part 1 is straightforward. We can apply this formula with entries of vector A, B, and C in the first, second, and third row respectively. We guess that A dot B cross C is 16. Part 2. To compute C dot B cross A, we can also make use of this formula, except that this time we put entries of C to row 1 and entries of A to row 3. We can expand these determinants to get the result. We also know a property from the determinants that interchanging any two rows of a determinant gives the negative of the original determinant. Therefore, C dot B cross A is equal to the negative of A dot B cross C, which is negative 16. Finally, to compute C dot A cross B, we can first interchange C with A to get negative A dot C cross B. Then we can interchange C with B to get A dot B cross C. Since we have performed interchanging two times, C dot A cross B is the same as A dot B cross C, which is 16. In this example, we notice that, depending on the order of these vectors, the triple scalar product takes the value of either plus or minus 16. Now, you may wonder what's the meaning of A dot B cross C. In particular, what's the geometric representation of its absolute value? Let's suppose that the arrow tails of vectors A, B, and C are now touching together. Since we know we should perform B cross C first, so let's consider this part first. From a past knowledge, B cross C is a vector which is perpendicular to the plane containing vectors B and C, and its direction is determined by the right-hand rule. Its length is equal to the length of B times length of C times sine theta. What's the meaning of its length? If we treat that the vectors B and C are two adjacent edges of a parallelogram on the plane, then the length of B is actually the base length of the parallelogram, 
whereas the length of c times sine theta is the length of this black dotted line, which also represents the height of the parallelogram. Therefore, the length of b cross c actually represents the area of this green parallelogram. How about the dot products of vector A with this green vector B cross C? By definition, the dot products of vector A with the vector formed from B cross C is equal to the length of A times the length of B cross C times cosine alpha, where alpha is the angle between these two vectors. In our illustration, alpha is an acute angle. Let's rearrange these three numbers. Previously, we have explained the meaning of this green part. How about the meaning of this blue part? If we refer to this right-angled triangle, the length of A times cosine alpha is the length of the base side of the right-angled triangle. Imagine that we have a cue board with the green parallelogram as its base and this as its height. Then multiplying these green and blue expressions is to multiply the area of the green parallelogram with the height of the cube board. Therefore, in this illustration, A dot B cross C represents the volume of this cube board. What's more, we notice that the volume of the cube board is also equal to the volume of an inclined prism with the same base and the same height, similar to the fact that the volume of these two piles of books are the same. Therefore, in our illustration, A dot B cross C also represents the volume of this solid. It's a solid with six parallelogram faces is called a parallelopiped. Please be careful that in our illustration, alpha is an acute angle. It's because vectors A and this green vector are both pointing up. However, next time if we interchange vector B and vector C, so that this is vector B and this is vector C instead, then B cross C will be a vector perpendicular to the plane containing B and C, and its direction is determined by the right-hand rule, and now it's pointing down. Alpha is the angle between vector A and the green vector B cross C, and it is now an obtuse angle. Therefore, cosine alpha will be negative. Since cosine alpha is equal to the negative of cosine pi minus alpha, where pi minus alpha is the angle here, the triple scalar product A dot B cross C in this case is a negative value, but its absolute value is the same as the value in the previous case. Therefore, in this illustration, A dot B cross C is a negative value but its absolute value still represents the volume of this parallelopiped. As a remark, cosine of pi minus alpha is positive. Cosine pi minus alpha equals to the absolute value of cosine alpha, and the length of this line segment equals the length of A times the absolute value of cosine alpha. In general, the absolute value of A dot B cross C represents the volume of parallelopiped with vectors A, B, and C as adjacent edges. Now you may wonder, is it possible that the volume is zero? In fact, it's possible. For example, if this time vector A is actually lying on the same plane as vector B and C, then alpha is a right angle, so that cosine alpha is zero, and therefore the triple scalar product A dot B cross C is zero. Consider another situation. Suppose we still keep the same vectors A and B here, but we change vector C so that it's now parallel to vector B. 
then either is pointing at the same direction as vector b, so that theta is zero, or c is a vector with an opposite direction as vector b, so that theta is pi. In both cases, cosine theta is zero, so that b cross c is a zero vector. In these two scenarios, the triple scalar products a dot b cross c will be zero. And we notice that, in fact, in these two scenarios, the three vectors a, b, and c are lying on the same plane, which is the plane with the same orientation as this parallelogram face in the front. There are more scenarios giving a dot b cross c to be zero, that is the volume to be zero. We found that the triple scalar product a dot b cross c is zero if and only if the vectors a, b, and c are lying on the same plane. That is, the vectors a, b, and c are coplanar. Therefore, the triple scalar products can also be used to check whether the three vectors are coplanar. This is the end of the video. Thank you very much.